Welcome, everybody. We're back with more Nest Block here. Some Wizards and Warriors race with Jam Evil and Sath Trush. Uh, before we start, just want to say that both of our runners have done a little bit of a manipulation in the game that will get them a, a guaranteed potion spawn right at the beginning. Without further ado, get going in three, two, one, go. Alright, and we're off. Doesn't... Jam got his potion manipulation. Does not look like Sap did, so he's gonna have to wait for a bird to do a little bit of a jump boost. No, he got a potion, but it was just a little bit late. So yeah, the object of this game is to collect enough gems to proceed past some NPCs and then go on to bosses and kill them. Uh, it's a lot of vertical jumping involved. Uh, the jump route is very carefully planned out in this run to get the exact amount you need and the fastest ones. This door opening here is totally random. It just opens whenever it feels like it. Kind of being a jerk for Jam. But he's moving on getting the boots of force. You're actually not intended to have this for super long, but we're going to try to keep them the whole run by not picking up anything that'll overwrite that item slot. Reason for that is you uh, can kick open chests without a key as long as you have the boots of force. Shield of protection. Jam needs three more gems. Seth needs one more gem to continue on. <laughs> Both sitting one gem away. The only way to get up that, that jump right there is to either have the pink potion or to do a uh, jump boost off of an enemy. Now we get our first, like, main weapon, the dagger of throwing. Just flies around in an arc around the room, collects any gems it comes in contact with, and flies back to you. It's actually some neat routing later in the run to clear whole rooms of gems very quickly by using certain dagger patterns. Here we are on our first boss. We're just gonna karate kick him to death. Throw that big boot out there. Our first damsel, Lucinda. She's only worth 5,000 points. She's She's not even worth rescuing, let's be real here. <laughs> so every stage in this game has different colored keys, which you need to open certain doors and or treasure chests. This is actually a tricky jump that Jam's doing right here. Jam got his, let's see about that. That jump to be made, you actually can't just straight jump at it. You have to jump and land, and while you're in your landing animation, jump again, because it affects your jump physics in very meaningful ways. This game and the sequel are both like that, where you have to jump as you're landing from another jump to get your maximum jump height and controllability. You see Jam as he's falling there, throwing some daggers out to collect some, da some gems all along the sides of the fall. What the uh, Boots of Force is allowing both of these guys to do is just kick open chests without having the, the prerequisite key to do so. Got the Potion of Levitation now, which allows you to float about a tile off the ground, I'd say. You can then also jump out of that hover, giving you a little bit of extra height. Allows you to uh, 
clear some gaps you would definitely not be able to normally. So here we're just going to run past all of these bats, make it through the whole bat cave, ask Alfred where the hell he disappeared to, and then turn around and punch some bats. Float in place, take out all the smaller ads, some more Kevin Nash drop kicks. Seth's taking an unfortunate death there, but just has to run back through the bat cave. Alfred really needs to clean up this cave. This is getting a little bit ridiculous. Bruce Wayne is not paying for this crap. So this stage, we're hoping for a good bubble spawn. Too good of a bubble. Yeah, that was about as good as it gets. Barely made it back in time. Those bubbles spawn whenever they want, and they also spawn at whatever speed they want, so you could have to wait forever and get a super slow bubble and wait even longer on top of waiting for the spawn. It's just, there's a lot of RNG in this game. see a bit of a clip, jam jumping, using that levitation to jump into the ceiling, go through the wall and straight to the door he needs to go to. This is just some kind of cheap MS Paint blob, I don't even know what to call this guy. They did their best with those 32 pixels they had available to them. On to the map. And now to our next stage, which is actually going to be the final new stage we're going to see in this run. And we'll get into that when we get to the next stage, but yeah, this is going to be a little bit more broken of a run coming up on the next stage. Again, just following that careful gem routing to ensure that they have enough gems when they get to the night at the end of the stage. Hey, Scab, tell them what prizes they can win. Our winner today gets this beautiful Burger King crown. The finest gold-painted cardboard money can not buy because they give it away free with kids' meals. <laughs> and you roll all the Burger Kings, yes. That's how it works. You are the king of the Burger King. <laughs> Here you'll see some more of that using the dagger of throwing to just arc around the room and get some some gems. Seth leaving a few behind in that room. Hopefully that hopefully it doesn't come back and bite him. Oh it will. I'm I am being yelled at by our racers that it will. Smash TV strats just grab appliances, they work as currency. <laughs> I still find it funny that Smash TV, one of the prizes, that's supposed to seem like super unrealistic as a 200 inch TV, and now like, those are kind of a thing. I mean, you would need a screen that big to hook up that many VCRs. Scary, spooky ghost. Jam taking a game over, which doesn't really matter in this game at all. They just start you right where you died. And you can continue whenever. They aren't as mean as the sequel, where once you get past a certain point in the game, you just lose all continues. So we're going to have one more vertical climb section here. Then we're going to end up in a place that looks suspiciously like the first area of the game. And that is actually going to become a 
big benefit to both of our runners when they get there. Yeah, Griselda, she's worth rescuing. She's worth 30,000 points. See, the, the joke's on our runners. They think they're racing for speed, but really, we're going off high score at the end. <laughs> Wizards and Dorriers trolling again. So yeah, here we are in the uh, run past Papa Smurf there. We're going to go to the edge of the screen, and we're going to use that that potion of levitation to kind of clip through the edge of the screen and that took us from the stage we were in back to the first stage of the game so we're going to be able to proceed through the first stage just as we did the first time but the difference is it's going to give us the maiden that it would have gave us from the other woodland stage and also put us back on the second stage of the game where it will yet again give us the next intended damsel in distress because this game doesn't actually check what stages you're beating, it just cares how many stages you've beaten. So by doing this, they replaced the three longest and most difficult stages of the game with the first three stages again. Hey, second loop. This suit of armor obviously has some amazing ass padding. Otherwise, I don't think they'd be walking after some of these falls. Either that or he has a tailbone of tungsten. Alright, next boss down. Jam with the sharp point lead, only getting sharper as we rescue Penelope. 40,000 points. That's how that's pronounced, right? No? We're going with it, whatever. Petalo Cruz. <laughs> that blue potion is a huge speed increase. That's, uh kind of nice to get that dagger grabbed exactly zero gems. That was, that was well placed. That's not sarcasm. That's, that's some skillful placement to, to just miss all of them. Should still be able to get more than enough gems by the end of this segment, though. like Seth is back in the glitched out stage one, doing his vertical fall, testing out the butt padding in his suit of armor. Seems to be holding up, riding up as well, but mostly holding up. Alfred still hasn't cleaned the cave, that pile of shimmering garbage just rising up out of the ground. Candida, worth 50,000 points. <laughs> Fantastic. Now let's see what kind of bubble RNG we're going to get the second time. Not as good as the first. Got a good speed on the bubble. Took a little bit to spawn. Just goes to speak more to the randomness of this game. Just for the record, Seth Drush is playing on a very pretty Disney Mickey Mouse TV. So that, does that make Penelope the greatest Disney princess? 
Jam doing his out of bounds jumpity jump, fighting the blue MS Paint blob again. There we go. And time for jam. With that, he gets the crown. Well played, gentlemen. Uh, this princess doesn't have a name. She's just thy princess. Not even worthy of a name, but she's worth 100,000 points. She's worth... What is that? Three and a half penelopes? <laughs> Despite being the same exact person with the same sprite. Yes, thank you to RGL for putting on Nest Block every GDQ. These are always fun. I miss all my RGL peoples. I was a member of the crew way back in the day. Back in the early, early days, for that matter. It's, it's amazing to see how far the channel's grown since I was a part of it. And that's all because of people like our buddy Cypher in here, Elrock, Yellis Rake, just the entire crew. My hat and crown is off to you guys. But yeah, with that, oh, Jam's crown. He won it fair and square. With that, that's Wizards and Warriors, guys. Thanks for watching.